We're one day away from a packed weekend of sport. That means it's time for In Touch, South Africa's only online digital program on your world of champions. Thanks for joining us. It's great to have you with us. We're, of course, streaming live on Facebook and you can catch us on YouTube as well. A bit later on, of course, on Catch Up as well, 7.30 on Supersport 1 as well. Now, today on In Touch, we're very excited to have one of South Africa's favorite players in the studio. He's very friendly, he's a hugger, and he gets to uh, John the Green and Gold, even though he started studying graphic design. Here's who we have on Untouch. Warren was a normal kid, um, but he was very respectful. Um, he had very good manners. His feet are squarely on the ground. Um, his personality is great. And the time he spends with you, um, he will talk to you and he'll listen to you. He's got a very strong personality. Um, he's got a lot of charisma and um, you know, people flocked towards him and he just led from there. Warren was um, just one of those well-mannered, polite, humble, hard-working young guys. You know, if you asked him to do something on the field, put an extra... In fact, you didn't have to ask him, he just led by example. The fact that he's always willing to, to do something for anybody, for, be it for his old school, be it for the club, um, just a special guy all around and wish him the best of success. Yes, it's Warren Whiteley here with us, Lions captain. You did balancing perfectly on the little bar chair, so welcome to In Touch. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. Yeah. That was a part out of uh, Road Less Traveled. Of course, you can catch it on Supersport, the full episode on Supersport's uh, YouTube channel. Now, Warren, seeing that some of your mentors chatting about mm. you, how does it make you feel? Yeah, I actually got a bit emotional with you sitting here. Um, but it was amazing and you know what those coaches did in my life and, and was unbelievable you know I think that's also probably why I want to coach um, after I play so yeah they really really instilled some amazing values within me and, and you know that um, will continue throughout my life. And seeing you in your school uniform and like looking back did you imagine you'll end up here? <laughs> I can't believe my haircut oh my <laughs> word. It's so sleek. <laughs> Shocking, no, I, I really didn't. It's not bad, it was Yeah, it's clean shaven, my wife would be very happy with that. Um, no, I must admit, I, I really didn't think, um, you know, I'd play for the Springboks and represent my country. Uh, I just didn't really believe it my, in myself at that age. Um, I didn't believe I was good enough. Yeah. I just really loved the game and I, I loved playing, I loved training. And that was my passion and it's still my passion and my driving force is I, I really have a love uh, for the game of rugby. And one of your mentors actually in the Road Less Travel, they mentioned that, um, I think you went primary school, that uh, you would rather be playing the B team in your position mm -hmm. than playing the A team out of your position. So well, the love for being an eighth man, <laughs> why? <laughs> um, that actually, it was, it was actually in high school and... Um, what happened is uh, Ian Ardendorf, who you see there, who actually passed away earlier this year, that's why I got a bit emotional. Um, but he he moved me to flank. I was a centre, fly half, wing, full back. I played, everywhere. <laughs> I played everywhere in the back line. And he actually sh suggested to me um, to move to flank. And that was under 16. And we had some amazing flankers in, uh, within our A side. And um, the coach came to me and said, look, sorry, Warren, we just don't have place for you in the side um, you'll have to go and play for the B side and I you know I said that's 100% coach um, really I, yeah I mean I just I mean, I'm just thinking back when I was that and you want to play for the A side of course you do um, I just felt I really and started enjoying my rugby even more um, moving moving to flank and um, I played club rugby at flank and I just felt like wow this is this is my position and um, I still loved it, you know, played in the B side and then I, I benched a bit for the A side and um, I absolutely loved it. I mean, there were, I never had a problem with yeah. playing C, B, doesn't matter. I mean, even when I was at um, Puck later on, I, I didn't play for the A side, I played C side. What? Because <laughs> so, in brain spun, as we always said. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I played and that was never, was never an issue for me, you know. I, I think I always challenge myself to get better. I mean, obviously there is disappointment mm. not making the A side, but 
I think I was, I loved the game so much. I just wanted to play and that was my, my driving force. Yeah. Well, it all paid off. You are where you are now, sitting in a Lions jersey and also getting to don the green and the gold uh, Springbok jersey. Unfortunately though, not the best of starts for this season for you. Yes. Obviously, being a big family man, I know maybe the little light at the end of the tunnel is that maybe you get to spend more time with Definitely. your family. Is that is that Definitely. happiness all around? It helps massively. I mean, it's 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 challenging. You know, injuries are really really challenging. And I, perhaps when I was a bit younger, I dealt with it not in the best of ways. I, I really struggled, um, and it would take me a week or two actually just to kind of get positive again um, and I've really learned over the last couple of years my wife has been instrumental and my kids as well so you know it's about a day or two and then I'm back on the horse again. Well, what does that mean do you then do you like um, how, what does that mean I to think, not, be unhappy then after an injury what what what's your it's process? Just, it's just the disappointment you know of the, like if I think back when I was younger you you just disappointed you you ask why mm. um, why me um, yeah, it's just that huge disappointment and you're a bit negative and it just took me a while to get out of that. Whereas now, I mean, something I really ho hold on to is something Yanni Peter taught us at the Lions, and um, which is everything that happens to me happens for me. So even though I'm, you know, I'm injured or I'm going through injury, I can, I can use it and I can make the best thereof. And I've really found that powerful and it's, it, it's really helped me through through these couple of injuries that I've had. That's a good mind shift to have, especially yeah, going through injuries. And then also a hug from a kid, is, 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 <laughs> it's, it's always a good thing. But then yeah. also we've got some, uh, a special message from you from uh, another former Springbok VHP. Oh, wow. Hi, everybody. I just want to give a shout out to Warren Whiteley. Warren, I hope you're doing well and that you're recovering strong and that you enjoyed your time with the family, but that you'll get right in time for the World Cup. I believe you have a big role to play with the Springboks. May you continue to inspire many and to lead people like you do. God bless. Oh! Wow, that, yeah, that's really cool. Eh? I didn't expect that. Yeah, How yeah. do you feel seeing that? People love you, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think just coming from someone like that, you know. So, yeah. It's really oh, cool. it's so nice to see. And it's so, you're so, such a love player. Every time you walk out onto the field, you're smiling. And as I said, you're huggable. Everyone, you always <laughs> give every single person a hug on the field. It's so nice to see. It's a warmth that comes through. And I'm sure your kids love that too. <laughs> yeah, geez, I think my kids play a big role in my life. And, you know, my wife as well. I mean, she's the soft, gentle one. And um, I think you, I, just, I just love the game. Um, and I really believe it's such a privilege, you know, to to represent your province, represent your country, and every time you run onto the field, um, it's just unbelievable, you know, never, never to take that for granted. Um, and just to show gratitude in life every single day is really important for me. Yeah. Uh, speaking of your wife, she's actually the first person you told when you got appointed to Springbok captain, right? Yes, yes. So run us through that. How was it getting that call or getting that meeting and then running out as the Springbok captain? Yeah, that was that was an unbelievable week. Um, uh, obviously, uh, with Alistair calling me in and um, asking me if I'll be Springbok captain, it was really unexpected. And we were sitting like this, just having a chat. And um, you know, he first just chatted to me about my family and how things are going at home. And um, then he kind of sprung it on me. You know, would I like? So no soft, just coy. <laughs> well, I think he did build it up a bit, but he then, you know, said he would really like to make me Springbok captain and I must think about it. And, and inside me, I'm like, yes, I'm like screaming, <laughs> like unbelievable. But I, I just try to stay be calm. Be chilled, come on. Try to stay calm and, and be chilled. Um, he said, I must go t speak to my wife and my family okay. and ask them first. And But inside me, I was like, yes. Check, yes. Ticket booked, everything. Definitely. Um, and it, it was unbelievable, really unexpected. And I got home and it was just, wow, it was really, really special. Obviously speaking to my wife and... It makes it real probably, eh? Very real. And, and my son was actually born in that week. Oh, wow, um, what a that special week. Very, very special week. He was born in that week before I ran out for my first test match as captain. I'm getting goosebumps. Leave no, it, was, <laughs> it was unbelievable and, and, and very, very special moment and something I'll treasure forever. Oh, that's awesome. Now, mm. with being part of a rugby setup uh, and Lions and Springboks, you get to travel a lot. Now, I know you've been in Japan and that's where we'll be having the World yes. Cup, obviously, but later on in the year. Yeah. What do you make of Japan and, and, and rugby being added to the mix there? Amazing, amazing culture, um, amazing people. I really loved it. They're so different. Is it? Like what? Life. 
everything, everything is different. Their way of life is completely different to how, how we live yeah. on a daily basis. And But the most amazing people, and I think it's going to be an epic World Cup. Um, yeah, just humble, down to earth, very respectful nation and beautiful, beautiful country. Well, it's good to see and it's good to see that you actually witnessed it so you can tell, report back, everything is yes. fine there. <laughs> uh, and then also play in front of a, a away crowd. I know we always mm. see it on the TV. We watch, get up early hours in the mornings to watch you guys play overseas. Mm. But how is it playing in front of an away crowd, especially a hostile one? Yeah, I mean, look, you when you, when you run onto the field, I think you... Even though they're hostile, it, yeah. it's energy, so it's it's amazing, you Just know. Turn it around. Even though it might be hostile, you can really feel that energy, yeah. and you can harness that and actually use it um, as a massive positive. Even though you are playing in New Zealand or Australia or away from home, yeah. you can harness that energy um, regardless of whether there are more South Africans or less. Yeah. Okay. That's very cool. Now, um, we are busy with the Cricket World Cup as well, just by the way. I don't know if yes. I want to remind everyone about it, but yes, we have a Cricket World Cup underway and we've got Alma Smith there. She caught up with this fan during all this cricket madness who was just sporting his rugby jersey. Here's Alma. It's a glorious and sunny day in Cardiff. I was just walking along minding my own business when a gentleman in a bright blue Stormers jersey breezed past. So I turned around, ran after him and met Leon Hare. Well, it's the Stormers. We've now qualified for the uh, knockout stages of the Super Rugby in South Africa, the last Southern Hemisphere at the moment. Uh, probably about three years back, and um, as good as new as it was then. Are you a South African? No, I'm from uh, Cardiff. And so tell me about where you bought this jersey and why? Uh, probably shop rugby um, about well, four years ago, maybe. It's just the colour and the team, really. Your prediction for Rugby World Cup winner 2019? Uh, new Zealand. Player of the tournament? Oh, that's going to be very much of a tough one. Um, I'm not quite certain. I'm going to put my neck on the line with that one, to be honest. Okay. And have you got a favourite South African player, even playing over here? Because you have plenty of us over here in Wales. Well, it used to be um, Charles Brits back in the day. Oh, yes. Because obviously, you look at him and he's oh. big, big, big. Yeah. Um, also, Brian Habana for the past days. Mm. Of the current crop? Of the current crop. Um, I'll probably go for a seventh player, Cecil Africa. Really? Because, well, basically, speedy plays out, and he's quite outstanding with his uh, dreadlocks, and he's very useful, very noticeable player for that, and um, talent is there with it. How cool is that? South African teams representing everywhere. Mm. Unfortunately for him, the Stormers are going to make it into the knockouts. Unfortunately for the Lions as well. Just not the year. But you have been one of the most successful South African sides ever in the Super Rugby competition. And you've led the side to the finals as well and done very well. It's clear to see. I think the one thing that stands out for me about the Lions is the brotherhood you see on the field. That those hugs just come naturally. <laughs> what do you credit that to? Uh, well, being together, um, you know, having that continuity over the last couple of years. And I think last year was a the first year of the last five that we really lost a lot of players yeah. and it's you know probably made this year a bit more challenging um, not having as much continuity as we've had in the past but we've bled some some young sisters throughout this year and they've been phenomenal Very exciting, um, yeah. which I think is really going to help us going forward um, so no it's you know it's been a challenging year we are disappointed you know we do love to mm. made it to the playoffs um, but there are two South African sides and we behind them all the way this weekend. Yeah, now it's South Africa now to back them wherever, yes. whatever province we're in. So you've got a very, I know as captain you say for you, for you it's very important to connect with each player and, yes. and know their story. Yes. But I'm sure this oak, Yaku Kriel, his story you know very well. <laughs> very well, very well. <laughs> Ik weet hoe jij is als mens. Je nog steeds in contact wees met, met ons allemaal. Jij is je is, is, is special voor ons, ons lief jou. I'm sorry Warren, we're getting you all emotional today. No, 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 today. it's all there. It's all good. Have you seen Ragyaku recently? I have, yeah. Saw him in the week and yeah, he's, he's an amazing guy. So, um, Trying to lure him back to the line. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> trying to convince him, come back. Okay, yeah. and is it working? Yaku, are you listening? Uh, well, you know, he is enjoying it there and he's doing really well. And um, But you never know. You know, I'd love to play um, some rugby with him again. I mean, he's just a phenomenal player, phenomenal person. And 
Yeah, man. He's... Well, clearly, if he's got you all emotional like this, <laughs> it must be lucky to see him again. No, it was lucky. He came to the union for, um, you know, a couple of days last week and uh, spent some time with the boys. And that's that's the kind of person he is. So, yeah. And also, I know uh, the team culture in Lions has come a while, doesn't happen overnight. And we'll get into that now. But um, another key player, Yaku Creel being a key player for the Lions, is a former key player of the Stormers that actually visited Newlands this weekend. Skolk Berger. Skolk, you're back. Uh, welcome back, pal. Thank you very much. Beautiful, beautiful winter's day. Hey, I mean, uh, Barry Hilton used to say, you know, what's the difference between England summer and winter? It says summer, the rain is warmer. So uh, it's a beautiful day at Newlands and uh, yeah, pity for the Stormers, but these things happen. You just told me about a funny laugh just now. Uh, semi-finals, decide to kick a penalty. Yeah, I mean, obviously did the whole season playing rugby and uh, me and Marcelo Bosch took penalties. Um, penalty went bottom left and ripped my hamstring tendon off the bone. So the, the hamstring tendon went over the crossbar and that was me. That was the end of the season. So I had that reattached and uh, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, not, not the ideal way. Hard not to retire, but it's probably an indication that the hardware has expired. So talking about the hardware, how's the body feeling, pal? Um, all right at the moment still, hey. Um, but I think in a couple of months we'll probably start start um, getting the old rigor mortis syndrome eh, and not be able to move around. So I've got to find myself a hobby, whether it's biking or running around. And football's out, obviously, or playing a bit of touch rugby. you got Skulls Jr. and Nicholas Silva here coming back, learning a bit off Afrikaans. No Afrikaans. So I'm speaking Afrikaans, but I'm getting the Queen's English back. So a uh, um, bit of culture here, getting them into to Newlands rugby. How's it being in Newlands, pal? Uh, great. Oh yeah, that's, I love this. Uh, what, what, do, what do you think, how did Danny's season go this year? Uh, rough. Was it rough? Yeah, I think it might be rough. Nicholas, you want to come in and have a chat? Whee! <laughs> 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 Welcome back, Paul, Thank and it's good much. to see you, man. Well, I hope that shot didn't distract the uh, Stormers team during that match. Uh, but nice to see Skolk better go back to his home and turf at Newlands. So, I know mean, this is weird. Uh, Warren's looking at the screen there. Here's a box here. We're going to do what we call the fear box challenge. So, Warren is going to stick his hands in here and feel what we what surprises we have hidden in the box. So, firstly, I'm going to put it in. Warren, are you fine? Yes. Okay. You got me and me, Kaiki. Nogi. All right, so I'm putting uh, this in. Can I know, Kate? Nee, wa, wa, wa. No? Okay. Uh. You can turn around, and now you have to put your hands in there and feel. <laughs> it's not going to bite me. No, shame. What? Is it alive? <laughs> Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh. Okay, you have to guess. What it is? Yeah. It feels like Play-Doh. No, ooh. Close enough, I'll give it to you. It's like one of those squishy balls. Yeah, okay, close enough. Mooi, goed werk. Okay, you can high five me now. Ah. Ciao, ciao. Okay. Close. Okay, draai weer om. What is this? We did fast so long. Okay. You, you, you entertain yourself there. Next one. Like, so is it... I can't even say this is what it like anymore. Giving Warren a squishy toy. That's how you distract him. All right. You see for again. Okay, can I go? Yeah. <laughs> Get to the right. You can give give back the squishy toy. Oh, I hope you would be it's more <laughs> That's easy. That's, That's the easy, easy one. Okay, me. one more. Okay. One more. No peeking. I'm not. He knows a scrum pad, obviously. Pet. Okay. Ugh. This one's weird. Okay. Last the energy. Two out of three already. Oh, this was a. Feels like AC. The AC is what you drink, or, or, or <sighs> yeah. see this man has kids. Yes, right. AC. Yeah, but it's melted AC. Woo! Oh, there it goes. That is. We used to drink those at school. Not yeah. that one. That Not one. That one. That one. That one, yeah. that one has its life on its own. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Three out of three, yeah. one. Yeah. Well done. Well done. So that was our fear box challenge. No fear. I thought he'd be scared. It the squishy is. one freaked me out a bit. But my kids play with toys like that. Oh, so, so. it's like meh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you remember when you bungee jumped? So how was that? Oh experience? no, that's terrible. Okay. No, don't so tell that's me. That's what we'll do next is the uh, fear challenge of bungee jumping, but it's fine. Are you well done, show that? No, are we showing that now? Please don't ah. show that. Thank you. <laughs> it's happening now. Please. I'm sorry, Warren. Tell us about it. What went through your mind? Um I've never done it, so you have to tell me. I didn't think I was scared of heights. But I soon found out I'm a little bit scared of heights. <laughs> 
effort. A little bit, yeah. So no, no, it was it was scary. It was tough. And would you ever yeah. do it again? Probably not. Would you ever do it with your kids if they would want you to do it with them? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but goodness, maybe, I tried. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, it was scary. Oh. Was it rough? Okay, you can see Warren's face there. It was, oh, it was an experience. Let's not say good or bad. It was just an experience. Okay, so we've got a very big weekend coming up for our South African sides. Yes. Uh, to the Bulls and the Sharks. Hopefully, we'll do as proud. But you've mm. been in that position, playing away in a knockout match. Yeah. What's your advice? Well, I think, you know, they, they're both in a, I would say, um, on advantageous position. I mean, they've got that underdog tag. Um, and the Bulls have done really well away from home this year. So... I think they've, there's definitely a chance there. Um, two contrasting styles. Okay. I mean, the Hurricanes will try and speed up the game, but um, I think the Bulls will stick it up front and try and physically dominate them. And then the Sharks and the Brumbies, are, I think the Sharks really have a chance to upset them there. So, yeah, so I, think both, I think both teams have a good chance. Okay, yeah. and then it's not because both South African sides are good South African here, picking both of them. <laughs> and then tomorrow morning, we've got the Crusaders up against uh, the Highlanders. What do you make of that one? Who are you picking there? Look, I can't see the... The Crusaders losing. I yeah, just can't. they've got a full strength side as well. Yeah. No, I can't see them losing. They've been they've been really good, and when they need to turn it on, I mean, we have seen weaknesses, yeah, uh, which they haven't shown in previous years. So there is, you know, weakness there, but I think they'll they'll know what they have to do. Yeah. So, on Super Brewery, would you pick the Crusaders by how much? I would comfortable, comfortable win. I would say about 15. Okay, got it. Make a note, 15, and then we've got the Chiefs and the Aguares. Who Ooh, and Bahama? That's, that's going to be a close one. Uh, yeah, the Aguares, the Chiefs, how well done is that? Yeah, the Jaguars have been doing really well. And the Chiefs, you know, they've got Retallick back, Sam Kane back. So their leadership group is back. So I think that's going to be really close. I would say the Jaguars by two. Oh, interesting. Two okay, points. and then the Bulls by how much? I think the Bulls, oh, it's going to be very close, eh? Also like one... Oh, that's going to be a close one. Well, that's the one point. Yeah, <laughs> if you can go 0.5, really, you would. Eh? <laughs> I think it's going to be really close. I think the Sharks. You want to pick it? You can't pick a draw because it's a knockout. Sharks by seven. I would Sharks say. by seven. All right. You heard what Warren has to say. Yeah. Get your Super Brew picks in. Let's all be good South Africans and back our boys all the way. Uh, thanks for joining us at In Touch, Warren. Thanks for having me fearless. Pleasure. Emotionally and physically. <laughs> 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 it's Warren Whiteley. You can catch In Touch on YouTube, of course, a bit later on, and on Catch Up on Supersport 1 or on Supersport as well. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend.